Running the Bases with Small Businesses. I'm Randy Rohde, and I have a passion to work with small businesses, and I love baseball. So I thought, hey, let's bring them together. So every episode, I sit down with local entrepreneurs, business builders, and small business owners to talk about their wins and whiffs, their tools of the trade, and to give actionable tips to other business managers. We'll cover the bases with entrepreneurship, operations, sales, digital marketing, innovation, plus a little fun baseball talk. Thanks for joining us today. Settle in, grab your Cracker Jacks, and you know what they say, play ball. And it's a great day for a ball game. Thank you, Gary. That guy is so good. You got the little personal flair. He does it all right there. But but there we go. All right, hey everybody, welcome uh, to another uh, episode of Running the Bases with Small Businesses. I'm Randy Rohde, and I've got a great guest today and a first in many occasions. But this guy's a, a former. Fox News TV personality is a tennis head coach, and he's also the CEO and founder of Trader Man Wine Distributors right here locally in Ohio. So Luke Taylor, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Randy. Yeah, yeah. And I do have to say, you know, before we get going into the show, rumor has it that you actually tried to fight a fire naked. <laughs> is that true? You got to give us the story on that before we get into your journey oh, with Trader God. Man Wines. Come on, come on, lay it out there. Yeah, about uh, God, what's Sammy? My middle guy is seven, so about six, about six, six and a half years ago, I had been working. I mean, was probably what five years old, uh, four years old. And as you know, when you start a small business, you're working a lot of hours, midnight, burning the midnight oil, as they say. And uh, came home from work around eleven, eleven thirty. Watched the little NBA playoffs. It was May third. And my wife was pregnant, tough pregnancy with Sam. He was kind of a mover and a shaker. And at uh, 2.30 in the morning, I get a yell, Luke, get up, Luke, get up. Didn't hear any alarms, ran out. And at that time, I used to sleep naked, but uh, don't anymore, obviously. <laughs> uh, and uh, ran down the hall, and uh, my pregnant wife was fighting a fire. And there was a fire that was coming from outside, inside our house in our kitchen. I got, I said, you know, give me the fire extinguisher. I was, I was naked, obviously. And my wife went upstairs and got our daughter, got her out of the house. I, instead of spraying the uh, fire extinguisher at the fire, I sprayed it in my face because I was half asleep. <laughs> so if you've ever tasted fire extinguisher, it's pretty disgusting. And uh, did nothing, threw the fire extinguisher down, ran outside. And I was on the phone calling the police or fire department 911. My wife looks at me, she's like, Look, you better go back inside and get some clothes on. So I ran back inside of the burning house and got clothes. And uh, yeah, so... You know, it's just, you know, when when you own a business, it's the same thing, right? You just d do what you got to do. Oh, my gosh. That is great. That is a great story. And a first, I, I don't know if I've heard of anybody ever a story like that. That is good. Yeah, it happened. <laughs> well, I'm glad everything is okay and you've recovered and nothing, uh, no serious bodily harm. Okay. I think my wife has mental scars, but other than that, we're good. Right. Well, listen, so as I said, you are a first on many friends for us. You are the first guest that has actually come and brought me a beverage. And of course, you're Trader Man Wine. You distribute wines and you brought me a bottle of wine. I, I, if I had an opener, we would cork it and, and, and have fun with this. But tell us about Trader Man Wine. So you've been going strong for 10 years now. Tell yeah. us all about it. What do you do? How do you do it? For sure. So we're uh, based out of Stowe. Uh, the last 10 years, we've been voted best wine distributor in Stowe. I don't know if you ever get those. They come in the junk mail. Yeah. It says for 175 and you get the plaque. Hey, and congratulations. I, I've yeah. never gotten the plaque, but I, I like to tell people 10 years ago, I'm the best <laughs> wine distributor in Stowe. I'm actually the only wine distributor in Stowe, but let's just not go there. So I uh, started Trader about 10 years ago and have always been passionate about wine loved wine, grew up drinking wine, actually collect, was collecting wine and uh, kind of on a whim was in uh, Paramount Tennis Club and uh, had two awesome partners that still own the club, learned a lot from them. But I think I was just ready for my own thing and uh, decided to look on the internet and see how do you start a wine distributorship. I haven't worked for anybody for probably two, 15, 16 years 
And as you know, once you start your own business, it's hard to go back. Yeah. I don't want to say the dark side, but I I like the fact that I control my destiny. Mm -hmm. Right. If I, if I fail, it's on me. If I succeed, it's on me to a certain extent. I mean, I obviously have a great team and what have you. Right. Yeah. But yeah, started 10 years ago. We, 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 so we distribute wine. So I deal with wineries all over the world, anywhere from Cal, well, California's not all over the world. Well, they're a different world over there, but California, Washington, uh, Oregon, Argentina, New Zealand, Portugal, Spain, France, Italy, I think Germany. And we, I have to organize the shipping. We have, work with shipping companies. We bring it into Ohio and then we sell it throughout Ohio. So we have a, a great gentleman in Columbus selling for me. I've got some awesome people up here in Northeast Ohio. And uh, I sell too. I enjoy it. Kind of keeps my beat on the ground. And yeah. Just growing ever since. Growing pains this year, obviously, with everything going right. on. But I, I really enjoy it. And it's really allowed me to do what I love and create a passion. And, and, and my kids, you know, appreciate I get them in the warehouse once in a while. And uh, they, they the boys and <laughs> my my delivery uh, guy, Steve, who's awesome and been just really influential in my business career, especially, says, oh, we're the boys here. Because, you know, they'll put empty boxes everywhere and the, and the, they'll move the van around. It's, it's pretty comical. Oh, that's fun. That's good. So I, I loved your comments in regarding to working for somebody else. Cause I think, I, I don't know what I would do. I think I'd have to I'd put a gun to my head. I don't know. It would be it's so hard to go back into. Yeah, but think you get a paycheck every two weeks. Yeah, th- that is. And there's a good chance it's not going to bounce. <laughs> that is. You know? Yeah. That, that, there, so that does, there's some security there maybe, but yeah, it would be hard. Yeah. That would be a challenge. So you're a long way from like premium wine country, even though I know that there's actually some pretty decent wines here in Northeast Ohio. They've gotten better. Yeah. But when people think about wine, they really don't think about Ohio all that much. And, you know, you're a long ways away. How does a, how does a guy from, and I, I, I do pick up a little tinge of a Canadian accent. Oh, no. <laughs> right. Am I right? Oh yeah, for sure. Born yeah. and raised baby. There you go. So how does a guy from Canada now in Ohio become a wine expert? How, did, how in the world did that ever? I'd like to attribute all this to my wife, my lovely wife, Melissa Taylor. There you go. She dragged me to Akron. I love Akron. Uh, I love Ohio, but man, that's a good question. So I grew up playing tennis and did the athletic route, came from, went to Canada to uh, the States, I was an Arkansas saw for two years and that was interesting awesome experience mm-hmm. and then uh, i don't know to... about much wine in arkansas no no either. no well you know i didn't <laughs> when you're in college randy i don't know what it was like for you you don't drink <laughs> wine now i know people that might drink box wine and put the bladder in a in, yeah. a, in their uh-huh. in their purse not mentioning any names but you know i think i was drinking rolling rock and there little bats go. and most oh. but but yeah. yeah i mean the thing is wine is universal it's worldwide and, and playing tennis I mean, I had friends from Spain. I had teammates from Croatia. I had teammates from Australia. I had kids that I coached that were from Australia. So you really get a, a great appreciation. When I when I was a, the men's tennis coach at DePaul University in Chicago, I was also doing my master's. And really, there was a wine shop, which has since been bought by the other big one, Binney's Bought Sammy's. And I mean, I just you just learn about it, and you just get an appreciation and, and brought that passion into distri- distributing wine in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Good for you. All right. So do you consider yourself a wine expert? I'm, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm not a wine sommelier. I mean, I, I don't, how do I put this? I have a master's in PR and advertising. Right. I, I'd like to say I have a master's in bullshit. <laughs> my wife, my wife has a master's. She's she's the smart one in the family. She probably would agree with your oh, BS master. <laughs> I mean, I, I've had one of the largest wine companies sit in my office in, in Stowe, Ohio. Little, you know, my little company, and just tell me all this stuff and talk down to me. And I just stopped them. I said, "Listen, I live by one principle in business." They said, "What's that, Luke?" I said, "Never bullshit a bullshitter," <laughs> and that changed the accord. But it's it's. I can, I don't make up lies. I don't, but I love stories. And I, yeah. and I think I'm a decent storyteller that, you know, I know enough what I need to know and, and what have you. And it's, it's, you know, I, I know a lot about wine. Yes, but yeah. I'm, I'm, I'll never get the certification. I've got a lot of respect. I know Larry O'Brien, who's the only master Psalm in, in Ohio. I mean, he knows his stuff. Yeah. 
I think I tell better stories, but he knows his stuff. <laughs> I love Larry. Though. All right. So I'm just going to put you to the test here. Sure. So my favorite, if I'm going out to a restaurant or if I'm really, and actually we just did this the other night at our house as well, but you know, we do this every once in a while. So make my favorite meal, which is I like to get a nice steak and cut maybe and do a little grilled asparagus along with that. Worst wine to pair with, with yeah. asparagus. So, so give Awful. me, so give me, that's what I'm going to test you with. So give me a good wine that'll go with my favorite meal. Well, get rid of the asparagus, first of all. <laughs> asparagus is like the worst wine or worst food to pair with wine because of the chemicals or, or what have you in it. But a good piece of beef, though. What do you well, think? I a mean, good, Cabernet. good I mean, You can't go wrong with a Cabernet. Yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Uh, red Blend, uh, Petite Syrah, Zinfandel. I mean, I'd go with a mm-hmm. Cabernet, though. Nice, yeah. big, juicy, bold, yeah. nice tan and um, yeah. Cabernet. Nice, big, bold, yep. something with a bite. That's yeah. that's what I think. All right. Well, but that's you, good. But, that's what I do. But you know what? If you like uh, rosé, I mean, I don't know what it tastes like with steak, but, you know, whatever. Is that going to go with the asparagus? Nothing's going to go with the asparagus. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of butter. All right. So how do you stay on top of the wine world and the wine industry out here in Ohio? Drink more. <laughs> Drink more. <laughs> you know, the, that's a good theory. Well, the, I like the, that. Well, the best thing I've ever, one of the best things I've ever been taught from the professionals, I mean, a lot of these suppliers I work with are now good friends of mine over the years. And they said the best learnings in the glass is just drinking. Yeah. You, you know, I think me also selling, I've got, a, I probably have 50 accounts personally that I sell to. So I kind of know what's going on in the street. You know, if business is good, what's bad, what's moving, what, who's, you know, what winery might be moving distributors. So we're a franchise state in Ohio. So when you sign that contract, when, when I order that wine for the first time and I get it, we're in a contract and a winery can't just leave me. They have, you know, we have to, sometimes some have paid me to, to leave. Some have, <laughs> you know, we've agreed. It, it hasn't happened much. It's maybe happened three times. Right. And you know, they're, uh, listen. If you're good, if you're good to me, I'll be good to you. Right. I mean, it's it's like anything. It's all relationships. You know, before we move on to some other stuff, I I really would, and I think maybe the folks in our audience might enjoy as well. Uh, explain how the whole alcohol or, or you know wine industry works in Ohio, because I know it's different, even uh, distribution from mm-hmm. state to state. And I know Ohio because it's a state controlled. How does it work and how do you, how does it work for you as a distributor, I guess? Well, it's Ohio is a little bit different. It's a lot like Michigan. We're probably a little bit uh, nicer in Ohio than Michigan, though I am. Uh, See, you just scored points in all the Buckeye fans. So uh, I'm, not, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just going to say no comment. I will, t- I will say my father-in-law, my two of my brother-in-laws, my sister-in-law, and other and brother-in-law all either have one or two degrees from Ohio State. My wife went to Michigan. Okay. And I'm a Michigan fan, but yeah. I, I'm, I, whatever. That's all right. That's I, not, please, I li- please edit that out. That's no, all right. Kidding. I lived in Ann Arbor for uh, part of my career yeah. early on. And, yeah. yeah so I'm happy I, when Ohio State yeah. wins. It's good for the state. But yeah. so what What happens in Ohio is I have to, I have to, it's, it's FOB, freight, freight on broker. So uh, I have to organize it. I use a, a shipping company. They bring it in. Every time I get a case shipped into Ohio for trade or distribute, it has to be registered. Mm. Uh, the winery usually covers all the licensing and stuff like that. And then every time, whether I sell that case or not, I have to pay taxes on it. So I have to factor that in my price. Right. Uh, then I have to warehouses. I have a warehouse in Stowe, Ohio, I think I might have said earlier. And then we have to deliver it. We have to sell it, then deliver it, and then it goes to the consumer. So we have in in Ohio, we have minimum markup on the retailer and also um, a wholesaler too. So our prices are always going to be a little bit higher in, in in Ohio than say Illinois, where it's kind of a wheel and deal. Not I don't want to say wheel and deal, but they they can do their own pricing. Okay, but it's good because in it's good and bad. It it's is it great for the consumer. Is it better for me? Yes and no, because now being a smaller company, I have a little bit of protection and what have you. So it's, it kind of just is what it is. It is what it is. is All right. All right. Well, thanks for opening that up. So you've been doing this for a while and you've have done some 
I don't know. I mean, you're an entrepreneur. And so you've kind of created some other side businesses and activities kind of coming off of that as well. So I know you've got, you do a, like a consultancy and travel uh, yep. kinds of things. That's and, really, that's really good right now with the, with everything going on. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Yeah. So I take uh, groups out to Napa, Sonoma, and, and I've got all the, I mean, even if I don't sell the wineries or not, I've got the connections and what have you. I've got chefs and you know, I'm, I'm pretty much your butler for the week. So okay. I've done a couple. Oh, that's, uh, of those. that sounds couple, fun. Yeah, quite a few of those. Yeah. Um, but that's not happening this year. Right. There's just too much going on. And I also know you've got uh, a podcast um, that's out now called mm-hmm. Cork and Taylor. Yes. I understand. You just told me earlier here, you've got a, a new podcast um, called the Cork and Fork that is coming out here mm-hmm. soon. So you, you've you got your hands in a lot of different stuff. Tell me about the podcast for right now. Anyway, why did you start Cork and Taylor? And- I was probably bored. You know, I think when you have, when you have a, a business, you're always looking to grow, right? You're always looking to expand. It's not like you're trying to make more money, but you just want to be financially healthy. And I remember a good friend of one of my, probably my close, my, my business guru, one of them. I mean, my dad's one of them, but Trip Moore started um, a company called Trimore. His daughter runs it now, who's my wife's, one of my wife's best friends. And I remember him telling me, he's given me some great advice. He helped me with Paramount. And he said, if you're not growing, you're dying. And I think in this day and age, and we talked a little bit off air about why you did this and, and what have you, is to create the brand, is to, or not create, but increase the brand, the visibility. I've got the connections. I have the background in, I guess, TV and, uh, TV and radio. I did that in my, my previous career. And I just, wine's a little bit stuffy. And I'm not a stuffy person, if you know me. I'm actually wearing pants. This is the first time I've probably worn pants in <laughs> Thank you. two weeks. I mean, I even showered and shaved for you, Randy. Brush my teeth, even use mouthwash. Yeah. But, you know, with this pandemic, it, it, you know, my business got hit pretty hard. And people sure. are like, oh, really? Well, I don't sell a lot to the grocery stores. You know, we do some nice business with Acme. We do a little bit with Bueller's, a little bit with Giant Eagle. I mean, Acme has been has been really good through all this, knowing the family and just great family. But I, I miss a tinge of the radio and TV and I figured, well, I, I know about wine, supposedly, and I know a lot of people, and I've got some really good guests. It's been a challenge uh, mm. with some of the audio acoustics in, in California. But, yeah, then the new one coming out, I said, figure, you know, like I told you, I've got three kids under 11. Wife works uh, as a nurse practitioner. I, I guess I'm just crazy. I don't like to sit still. I'm like my mother. I just, I can't sit still. I don't watch TV. I don't drink caffeine. Don't have, co- I've never tried coffee in my life. Don't smoke. I play golf and hang out with my kids and my wife and work. Yeah. So, and, I, and you, you do what you love. And if you love something and all these, you, I remember you were asking, you are kind of got your hands in all these different things. They're all related. They're right. all wine right. related. So, so far, so, so far, so good, I guess. Wow. Good for you. All right. Well, that's pretty exciting stuff. All right. So now it is the, uh, do you know what time it is, Luke? And it's time for the seventh yeah. inning stretch. So, Luke, do you like baseball? So you mentioned, I know you're Man, into I'm, tennis. I'm, I'm from Toronto. Yeah, That's all I got to say. Go that, Blue Jays. So there we go. Go Indians. All right, all right, all right. So I had my research team. Well, I should tell you. So the, uh, this is the part in the show where we kind of just change gears a minute here. And we talk a little bit about baseball because I am a big baseball fan. And so, I, you know, my guests have to endure my fandom, right? You're a White Sox fan, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Jeez. I saw the flag. <laughs> okay. So I tasked my research crew here to to come up with some material or uh, subject around baseball that's tied to your industry. So, right, the wine industry. And so w- w- here we are, wine in the MLB. All right. You ready for this? Going to uh, see what you know here. When and where, so what year, I'll say, and, and what stadium or what city was wine first served at a baseball game? I've got the answer right here. Well, so, I hope hey. so, because I don't. I'm going to say, let's see, 19... I'm going to say like Yankee. It's got it. No, no, it's not Yankee Stadium. There's no way. Who are a little bit more classier? No offense to Yankee fans. 
Uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to say it's got to be like San Francisco, Candlestick yes. Park. Yes. Ding, yeah, ding, ding. Now. Okay, there in 1962. You know what? You are, for just guessing, you are pretty I'm darn good. Crap, that's you I are I good. Am, yeah. So San Francisco, yes. I'm, you know, that seems to be kind of illogical. 1957, actually. That's off by five Yeah, years yeah, now. yeah. So they served the first wine, and uh, I'm not sure how good this would really would have been. It's it, it was from a producer that provided low-cost bulk wine to local churches. A glass of Kribari? Sounds delicious. <laughs> Sign me up. Screw screw top bottle for 75 cents at the concession stand. Yummy, right? Yeah. All right. So since then, individual teams, they've been partnering. They've nope. done all kinds of thing, fun things with wineries. Some stadiums even have tasting rooms inside mm -hmm. uh, wine bars and such. Uh, and then this year, which is kind of odd because of yep. the pandemic as well, everything going on, they MLB announced their first official wine across the whole league. One more question. Any idea on who the brand or the provider of that wine is? Do I win anything for any of this? Just uh, no. Oh. <laughs> I'm working hard here. You're making me use my brain. It's got to be... Is it expensive? Because I, I it don't think it is. Okay, but. so it, it could be one of one of a couple. I'm thinking Kendall Jackson. No. Okay, I, I get like twenty guesses. So that's one. <laughs> this is my no, This is my show now, Randy. So, okay, Taking it over. A Prisoner Wine Company. No. He's pretty big. All these plugs. He is pretty big though. Joel Gott? No. Uh, Mon uh, Mondavi. That That's was my Mondavi. that was my seventh that, guess. That I was, was getting there. Oh, that was down the Robert list. Robert yeah. Mondavi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Robert Mondavi yeah, Woodbridge. Yep. Is oh yeah, the, uh, that makes the sense. brand. Yeah, that makes sense. Familiar with that? Uh, sure. Yeah. All right. Never had it, but I, okay. I will give you. This is what you win the the whole sheet, the okay. talking point sheet. There well, you go. In the recycle. <laughs> you know, I'm going to print a, <laughs> an invoice. I might not. It might need. I'll use this again. I, I use I'm everything. All right. Let's get back into it. Play ball. All right. So uh, as we say, so you've you've had your hands in a lot of different businesses, a mm -hmm. lot of different industries, even, you know, hey, going from wine, tennis to wine. I mean, that's, you know, I guess mm -hmm. you could say there's a connection. Why not just focus on one? So as an entrepreneur, think about that as a, a, a in the stance of an entrepreneur. Why not focus on one industry or one business even? Well, I mean, I think they're all tied because if you look at my travel company, it's wine related. I'm 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 um, using existing relationships I have uh, with the podcast. I'm talking about wine with my new podcast called Cork and Fork, a Northeastern Ohio food and beverage pot experience. Nice, I'm nice plug. Well, yeah. well, no, but I mean, <laughs> I'm dealing with accounts of mine, just like right. yourself. You've yeah. interviewed some of your accounts. Yeah, I'm I'm interviewing. Maybe we don't sell to them, but you know, they've got a great product. I just think with, with this area, I, I love Northeast Ohio. I mean, my kids are, are born and going to be, are born in, are going to be raised here, are being raised here. My wife's from here. I really enjoy it. It's uh, four and a half hours to about five hours from home in Toronto or in Oakville. Right. You know, I think it's also to, I'm not putting all my eggs in one basket. I think with what's going on now in the world, I think you have to be diversified, but it's not like I've got, it's not like I'm doing wine and then I'm doing steel, right? Right. It's all related into the, the umbrella of Traderman per se. So, and I, and I just, I, I think it's with, with business being slow for me, it just is giving me potential, potential, right? I mean, we, we sell on potential now, potential doesn't pay the bills, but potential keeps, your mood positive. And I, and I think a lot of people look at numbers a little bit too much. I mean, we all do, you know, we're down 10%, 20%. Well, what's happening next month? And I always feel with it, it's not where you're at, it's where you're going. And I think with a lot of potential with podcasting to grow my business, and it's actually already helped, you know, we've sold wine because of it. We've gotten wine tastings because of it, just because someone heard and they said, Hey, let's do, I want to do a wine tasting with you. So I, I feel like I am focused on one industry and it's just, it, it's so far, I mean, so good, I guess. Yeah. And I think it's great insight, especially 
at this day and age in the pandemic and when there's, and as you mentioned, you know, just about any business I've talked to. However, I do have a couple of clients that are doing gangbusters there in manufacturing, but just about anybody else has taken some kind of hit, right? And so, and I think you begin to broaden a little bit of maybe what your offerings are, some of the things that you're involved with, both, I think, from kind of a, a, a mental health a little bit, right? Keep you engaged and keep you thinking, but as well, it helps you diversify probably. Mm-hmm. So it helps so that you're not completely reliant just on this one silo of business that you've got some other potential things that may not necessarily uproot your primary, but it adds to the pie and helps begin to level some things out maybe. Yeah, And I think that's, oh, very much so. And Trip Morris, who's just been kind of really helpful with me in my business career, I mean, he he does concrete, but then he has a stabilization. They have a trucking company. Right. But they're all related. And I think if you can do that, it's just going to help. Like if one's kind of slagging, it picks up the other one, and it, it just helps in, in that realm. Right, right. So, you know, through your journey as an entrepreneur, what's been your biggest challenge thus far? How did you tackle <sighs> Keeping it? Keeping the toilets clean. <laughs> I got to clean them. Oh God. I think when, when you, when you start a business, you try to be everything to everybody and you have to have a vision and you got to stick with that vision. I tried to grow too fast with Traderman probably in the year three, four and five. And that really, I mean, you know, I didn't, I was selling, I was, I I was picking up, I was doing more inventory, but I wasn't selling more. So there's something wrong with it. I think it's just stick, stick to your guns. Time, I, I always feel, I mean, when you own a business, you never have enough time in the day. Another tra- challenge, I think, too, was trying to balance. I've got kids who I just love and adore and a wife who I love and adore, and it's trying to balance that and also trying to keep, when you go home, your dad and your, you know, right. you know, husband and, and, and father, and it's like just trying to, and I think I've done a better job. I think you need to interview my wife because <laughs> I think I'm wonderful, let's be honest. But, but I, I think it's the balance, right? I think right. every entrepreneur can tell you is balance and you have to take care of yourself. I'm, I'm, I stress eat and it's, it's always going to be a challenge for me. And, and especially this year, whew, right. I mean, so I think there's a lot of challenges. I mean, we could have a whole couple episodes. Yeah. You know, we uh, do one just on, stress, on challenges. Yeah. You know, two on financial health. I mean, yeah. oh, let's go. Yeah. It is hard and it's been a, a difficult time. I mean, you and, went and through it. You're going through it too. Uh, I mean, absolutely. I mean, yeah. And we've, you know, unfortunately, it seems like about every 10 years or so, we kind of go through some of these big, don't say that. you know, and don't say so that. hopefully <laughs> we won't have this for a while anyway. Right. So thinking yeah, throughout 10 years, but so you've, uh, been operating now Traderman Wines mm-hmm. for 10 years. 2010. Yeah. Um, looking back over those years, anything that you can think of that you would have done differently at this point? Probably never started it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Gosh. I, I, man, that's, that's, that's kind of a tough question. What would I do differently? I would probably not have brought so many brands on an issue, like in the middle. I, I think the middle was the toughest challenge. I, I brought a sales manager who's, you know, did a pretty good job, but did I really need it kind of thing? Mm. And I don't. So, um, not now. I think that's the biggest thing is, is trying to, you know, the, what's, what is it? The tortoise, tortoise in the hair, right. You know, slow and steady. Right. I, I think there's no, I think we all get caught up on, I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow. I want to make more money. I want to make more money. But just because you're selling more doesn't mean you're making more because the more you sell, especially in distribution, you know, you have overhead, you have warehouse costs, you have delivery costs, you have vans, you have inventory. And just because I might sell another $500,000 or a million or a hundred thousand doesn't mean I'm going to make any more money. Right. And I think the bigger for my business, the bigger I wanted to get the more headache and I, and you got to have a balance. I mean, I have friends that own companies that have 250 people and they handle it well. I have friends that have five people companies and, you know, they don't have that balance. So Mm. it really doesn't, I've got friends that have 50 people and they they can balance it. So I think, and don't compare yourself to other people too. I mean, if you like what you do and you love what you're doing, it might not be now. It's not where you're at, it's where you're going. And if you see the vision, keep your head down and just keep trucking. 
I love that advice. Uh, actually, you threw out so many great just I was nuggets. a coach. Randy, I'm yeah. a coach. Man. Yeah, well, I'm a coach by heart, so coach, my wife drives me nuts. Yeah, coach, you did it. You hit it out of the park on so many aspects there. But, you know, I think you're right. And there is a cost of scale. And sometimes... And in businesses, and I'm sure, you know, some of our business owners that are listening, you know, they get this as well, is that you can operate your business, take it to a certain level of growth, and then understand the next level or the next stage is going to cost this. And not necessarily just in dollars or resources, but as well on just your own personal time and engagement. What does that mean? And then you kind of ride that next level kind of hard until it gets to a point where you can either bring on additional resources, staff, you know, people to help you manage it and that kind of thing. And then you begin to kind of coast and glide and keep growing. And then you kind of like, okay, do we keep going or what do you do? And it's tough. Those are very difficult conversations to have kind of that you have internally, right. With, Mm -hmm. with yourself. Yeah. So that's good. But I'd love, you know, stay true, stay true to the vision, stay true to where you want to go. And I think the biggest thing is, and I say this to my, my kids, and it, you know, probably, I mean, I'm, I'm a coach at heart and you know, I played high level athletics and, and I tell my kids and I, and my wife here is, and it drives her nuts probably. And I live by this thing. There's never any problems. There's only solutions. People, especially in business, they worry. I feel they worry too much about the problem and they don't spend enough time with the solution. And I think that's the best advice I could probably ever give. Don't worry about the problem. Figure out a solution. Perfect example. Last week, you never have those weeks where it just keeps going and going. I only played golf once, which even my wife says I'm not really playing much golf, which I just want to put that on the air. (laughs) And I agreed with her. And she said, what's wrong with you? But I had a perfect example. I got this wine delivered and we needed it real bad. And this came in from New Jersey. It was a pallet of wine, so 60 cases. And I pull it off the the the, the truck and uh, uh, forklift. I'm cool because I have a forklift. Nice. I don't know how to drive stick, but I can drive the forklift. My son would love to uh, come and tour, tour yeah. around. It's your... not the five second tour. Yeah, I can give him the five second tour. <laughs> the VIP is 10 second tour. So I get it. I'm looking at this pallet and I'm thinking to myself, it just keeps getting worse. They delivered the wrong pallet of wine. The oh. funny thing, the silver, the funny thing behind it, it was actually my buddy's pallet of wine that was supposed to go to Wisconsin. Okay. So I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to take some of it off. He won't mind. He doesn't need it. Well, he needed it real bad. He needed it oh. worse than I did. Well, the, the, the delivery company said, if you touch it, you break it down, I can't take it back. So I had to take it back. And it's just, you know, that's the frustrating part, right? Yeah. I mean, we all have. Right. But I'm like, well, what am I going to do? So you get on the phone, you call them. I got the wine the next day and it, it somewhat worked out. Good. So you focused on the solution instead of the problem. Attitude and effort. Yeah. There My you kids go. know it. The yeah. two things you can control every day is your attitude and your effort. When you wake up in the morning, you don't think to yourself, man, Randy, I'm going to have a shitty day. <laughs> right? I mean, I, I felt like that last week. And I and yeah. I finally said to myself on Monday, I'm going to have a good day. You know what? My day was okay on Monday. That is actually some of the advice I give my kids every day as they head out to school. Is like, hey, just give your best effort. Yeah. I don't care. Best if you, effort yeah, today. I don't care if you get A's or you win or you lose. Right. I just... Attitude. It's just like show up and just, give me attitude. That's all you can control, right? Yes. Yes. Good words from the coach. Yeah. I don't listen to my own words sometimes, but whatever. <laughs> so uh, aside from some of the stuff that you do from podcasting, what else do you do? How do you, can you market? What do you do as a distributor? How do you market? Wine. Yeah. Wine. Trader um, wines. Well, it's interesting because I am a distributor and I've got about 30 awesome, about five awesome suppliers. I've got about another 25 <laughs> I hate, but no, I've got like, <laughs> I've got 30 probably really good partners. Okay. And it's interesting because we can't really advertise like with, by law because of the, the liquor laws. Right. At least I, that's what I tell myself. So we just do a lot of tastings. I mean, we do, I do wine dinners. I've done them in Finley, Ohio. I've done them right. in, I've got one coming up next week at Lake Forest Country Club. And I mean, that's the biggest way in glass pours. You know, we try to get on restaurant lists because then people try and then they try to find out where they buy it and stuff like right. that. And uh, that's really the best way I can tell you. I, I work with a lot of boutiques, small wineries, Laird out of Napa, Keenan out of Napa, uh, Meadowcroft out of Sonoma. Uh, they don't have the marketing budgets. Right. I mean, they've, they've obviously done well for themselves, but so it's just, we just have to work, keep pounding the pavement. Like I said earlier, I've got a great team that, 
you know, especially now they're just, they're just fighting for every, you know, tooth and nail, which right. is, you know, which is I'm blessed and honored in, in that respect. I love the kind of the, the grassroots, if you would, a little bit, the, the, the personal touch, you know, where you're doing the dinners and the glass pours, I, you know, I think it still comes down to a relationship, you oh, know, God, that yeah. people will do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And my company's goal is like, well, how do we convey that digitally? But, you know, I still think it comes down to it. That's why I love, you know, you guys are out there on the street doing it. It's porn. all about relationships. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's great. Where do you see the company? in the next three years what, what's the three years uh, and i'm not even saying long term but you know that is kind of long term i suppose years, but what's God, the strategy it seems like forever well let's see i want to play more golf <laughs> no let's see you know it's like i'll never forget my first really ever job interview was with my with my news my first boss my news director at kfxa kfxb in cedar rapids dubuque i was a general assignment reporter uh sports director on air for fox and he said, where do you see yourself in five years? And I said, Mr. Bond, I just want to dance. And he looked at me and he actually hired me. So so three years, man, I, I, I really just want to keep dancing, to be honest with you. And what does that mean? I want to keep doing what I'm doing, just keep growing, keep trying to just put one foot forward over the next one and hopefully not keep going backwards. I'm hoping the podcast will help, especially the local one, the cork and fork. Oh man, my kids are too young, so they can't really take it over. Three years, man. Can we talk like 30 years? <laughs> I'll still be working at 30 years. I, I just, I, it's the wait and see approach. I, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Right. Uh, let's be honest. The only thing I can control is today. And if I can just, you know, be careful, tight is right right now. I mean, everybody thinks you got to cut, 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 cut. I think you got to make um, smart decisions. I really want to control inventory you know, control pricing, just look at everything. And, and hopefully we're just going to get out bigger and stronger. When, when, when we started the tennis club in 2005, Paramount Tennis Club, we had Medine, we built another one in Westlake. 2005, what was 2008? Yeah. Hey, believe me, I, and, and I lived I, through that one yeah, too. And, and I will tell you, we were up every year and I, and I think they still are. And, and I, I learned so much from Jim and Sarah Balzarini who, who continue to own it and, 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 and I think you just, it doesn't, it's the attitude and effort and it's just, it's not where you're at, it's where you're going. And I think in three years, I, I'm hoping our sales will be back. Or, I mean, we were having our best year up until about March 16th and then, you know, we're on a hike and heard the news that they're closing all the restaurants down that kind of stung, but it is what it is. So yeah. just trying to keep plugging away, just have great partners, have great people I work with and just keep plugging away. That's all I can do. Yeah. Yeah. I can't. Tomorrow's not promised. There you go. I mean, it's just today, really. And I would say, you know, you're probably 80, along with 80% of the other business owners that are out there because who would have ever have thought back in March that we would have been facing the last six months of craziness that we've had. Oh, I think and, it's a bad dream. Yeah. yeah. I mean, some days I, I'm serious. I drive and I don't even put any music or talk and I'm just thinking like, am I, is this really happening? But you know, it's life and it's, yeah. you just, it's, there's never any problems. There's only solutions. Yeah. I'm still trying to figure out the solution. There you go. Attitude knows, and effort. Call me. Yeah. yeah. That's good stuff. All right. So now here we are, we're coming down to the bottom of the ninth here. And for us, bottom of the ninth, it's, it's always the same question I give to every guest. What advice do you have for the other rookies in the game? So those folks who are thinking about starting a business or have just started there in their first uh, one or two years. I mean, you're a bit of a veteran now in the game of business. What's your advice for these guys? Whatever I tell you, don't listen. Let's see, God, what would be some good advice? You know, the best is surround yourself with good people. Surround yourself with, I mean, surround yourself with people that believe in you and that are going to help you. I mean, I, I can't, do what I do without my wife and my kids. I mean, my wife is in the beginning was interesting because she's not in business. Her whole family's in medicine and she's, I mean, she doesn't really understand, but I think she does now. And, and you got to have good support, whether that's at home, don't be afraid to fail. We all look at it like we're going to, we're scared to fail. And I think that's why a lot of people don't do what they do. They talk it like I was always raised by my parents who were awesome. They said, you know, the people that talk don't do and the people that do don't talk. Mm. And don't be afraid to fail. I mean, it's okay. I mean, you look at Abraham Lincoln. Didn't he fail three times? 
And they became president. Was it that Abraham Lincoln? At, at least, yeah. yeah. And then he got assassinated. So I don't know if that's a good, uh, good thing. But just do what you love. And if you believe in it and you feel, my dad would always say it's like gambling. Only gamble with your, I guess, comfortable with losing. So, you know, do all the research, but trust your gut. I mean, I, mm. my whole life I've been told I couldn't do it. Like someone told me with the tennis club, oh, you're crazy for doing it. Or, you know, I started this business only, I only had two contacts in the wine industry. And one of them told me, a restaurateur is a friend of mine, said to me, you're crazy. I'm like, are you, are you serious? A restaurateur is telling me I'm crazy. You own a restaurant. And I think it's just believe in yourself. And today is not tomorrow and it's not next week. And it's, it's not where you're at, it's where you're going. Right. And, you know, be, be smart about it. So nice, nice. who knows? What do I know? <laughs> Great words of advice. People can connect with you, tradermanwines.com. Mm -hmm. Yep. Right. Also look for you, I'm assuming, on all of the, the platforms for yep. Cork, Cork and Taylor, Cork and Taylor the and podcast. Yep. And then coming out soon, yep. when's the launch date for the new uh, one? I think August, either August 31st, we're going to have a promo out, I think, next week. And then it'll probably be beginning, end of August, beginning of September. And it's, uh, it will, the website will be out next week, www.corkandforkneo.com. And it's Cork and Fork and uh, Cork and Taylor's, you know, so we've still got to get that go. going. So, yeah. All right. Well, that Appreciate is, uh, that's great stuff. And hey, that's the ball game. Thanks for uh, being with us, Luke. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Randy. Yeah, thanks it's for been, having a, me. been a lot of fun. And for our audience, hey, thanks for joining us today. And if you liked our show, please tell your friends, uh, subscribe on any of your favorite platforms. And we'd always love your review. We'd really appreciate it. And as we say around here, we'll see you around the ballpark. Running the bases with small businesses is brought to you by 38 Digital Market, a digital marketing agency committed to client growth with lead generation, higher conversions, and increased sales. Connect with us today at 38digitalmarket.com.